I don't want to say just a just a yourself to the hands of the Lord, that the Lord himself will speak to you as we come to the, the clamors of our Sunday service for today, that the word of God we are going to hear today will benefit you, that the Lord will minister his way to you, will not be, will not be dull of hearing, that the word of God will benefit you today. That the word will profit you as the word of God comes to you. My brother, my sister, open your heart to receive the word of God. And ask for the grace to be the doers of that word. The grace to do the word the Lord will give to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for the way you've been blessing us since we came here for our worship service of today. Thank you, Lord, for everything we've done so far. Thank you, Lord, for filling our heart for the things we've had. Lord, as we come to the clamors of our Sunday service of today, Lord, I pray that you will break this bread of life to every one of us. And Lord, you will speak your way to our hearts that none of us will be dead of hearing in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the word of God we are going to hear today will benefit us and will do us good. And the grace we need to be the doers of your word. Lord, I pray you will give to everyone here today in Jesus' name. I pray that you will use these clean lips of mine to bless your people. And your word will have an impact in every life here today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you've an answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we be seated? Today, in our Sunday message, as um, I usual practice in our church here, We'll be going back to the text that we've considered during the time of our search the scriptures and we'll go a little bit deeper. A message like this is not something that is common in every congregation. 
A message like this, even though we hear it in our church here, Deeper Life Bible Church, is not a message that everyone, even those that come to Deeper Life, applies into their life. But my plea with you today is that you will not just hear these teachings as usual, but you want to go back again into your life. You want to go back into your circumstances and you want to apply the word of God you are hearing today. Because it's not just the hearers of the word that are blessed. It is those that do the word of God. It's not enough to hear. It's not enough to know. The question is, what you hear and what you know from the word of God, are you doing it? Because the message we are hearing today is a practical message. It's a message if you've been in our church here, even in Aberdeen. There is no year we don't talk about it in our church here by the grace of God. There is no quarter we don't talk about it by the grace of God. The question is, are you a doer of the word of God? I pray that God will give every one of us the grace that we will hear this thing and we'll go back into our homes and correct our lives and be the doers of the word of God in Jesus' name. What we are considering today is titled The Christian's Separation from the world. The Christian's separation from the world. We must understand that the Lord saves us and he left us here on earth not to be part of the world but to be separated from the world. The Lord brings his salvation into our lives. He allows the light of the gospel to shine into our lives so that through you and through me, that same light of the gospel will shine into the world around us. We are called not of the world, but out of the world. That's our calling as Christian. And that's why we are considering this message. If you go back again to our text in Second Chronicles, so when we talk about a message like this, it's not something that is new. It's something that has been in time immemorial, even in the Old Testament. Like we'll see in our text in Second Chronicles chapter 25. I want to show you something from here. Second Chronicles chapter 25. I will read verse 7 of 2 Chronicles chapter 25. But there came a man of God to him. A man of God to him. You know, it's only the man of God that will give you the full word of God. It's only those that are approved of God. That's why, like I said earlier on, this is not a message that is common upon every pupil. If you look at that verse 7, it says, There came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee. Why? It says there, For the Lord is not with Israel. That's the condition. Let them, let them, let, don't join yourself in affinity with them at this point in time because the Lord is not with them. And that, that's, why, that's the message that came to the king, Amaziah, through the man of God. He says, don't let the children of Israel, they might be called out of the tribe of Israel, but don't let them go with you at this time. The reason being that the Lord is not with them. The Lord is not with them. To weed with all 
all the children of Ephraim. He even emphasized it. The children of Ephraim. The Lord is not with them. What did Amaziah do? Look at it. I pray we will be like this man. In verse 10. Then Amaziah separated them to wheat the army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go home. Wherefore, their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. Look at that. The man of God already saw that these people, the children of Ephraim, the Lord is not with them. They cannot go with Amaziah. They cannot go with the tribe of Judah to battle. And as a result of that, don't let them go with you at this point in time. Don't join in association with them at this point in time. Be separate from them. Take them out of the camp of the tribe of Judah because they cannot go into the battle with you at this time. For the Lord is not with them. And as a result of that, Amaziah obeyed. Even though the children of, um, the children of Ephraim, they provided enough resources for the king to fight the battle. But when the word came to him and said, we cannot go with them, separate them from the army, from the army of the tribe of Judah. He did that. He was not looking at the commercial benefit. He was not looking at the populist, you know, opinion. He was not looking at the strength of the tribe of Ephraim at this point in time. He took the decision. He separated the tribe of Ephraim from the tribe of Judah because the Lord was not with them. And you can see what was the what was the evidence to show that the Lord was not with them? You see the anger in them. You see the bitterness in them. Immediately separated them from the tribe of Judah. They were angry. They were bitter. The same thing. And we are told in, in Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, with an angry man, thou shalt not go. That's the fulfillment of the word of God. I pray that God will give us understanding. Amaziah separated them. We are called to be separate from the war because the war, this present evil war, the Bible even call it the present evil war. The Lord is not with them. That's why we cannot go in association. We cannot go in affinity. We cannot go in agreement with the world. As Christians, we are called to be separate. That's why we are told in 2 Corinthians, the New Testament gives us a better perspective of what we are talking about today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I will read from verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's the word here. Unbelievers are the word. The Lord is not with them. They don't believe in God. They may be coming to church. Get it right? They may be coming to deeper life Bible church even here in Aberdeen but they do not believe in the God that we serve because how do you know a man, a woman that believe in God it takes the word of God as the finality over his life either the pastor is there or is not there or she doesn't trample on the word of God that's one that believes in God. That's the believer there. That's what makes him or makes I a believer. But as long as he hears the word, 
He comes to church and his life does not match the word that he's hearing. His life is not demonstrating the word of God in his behavior, in his conduct, in his attitude. He or she is an unbeliever. No matter his title in the church. No matter his position in the church. No matter his activity in the church. And the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As many who are born again, as many who have given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, ye are the temple of the living God. For God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Look at that verse 17 now. He emphasizes there. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye what? What did your Bible say? Did your Bible say join them, cooperate with them, agree with them? Walk in their ways, fellowship with them. He said, No, wherefore come out. If you have been deep in worldliness, the Lord is telling you today, Come out. If you have been sold to carnality and to worldliness and to the ways of the world, the word of God is coming to you today. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Be ye different. Be ye distinct. As children of God, we must be distinct. They must know you as a Christian. They must know you. Not those, oh, I come to deeper life. There is no deeper life in heaven. Do you know that? Do you know that? What we have in heaven is those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't, don't say, oh, I'm a deeper life. I, this is my choice. There is no denomination in heaven. Denomination ends here. What qualifies you to get to heaven is not the denomination in which you attain. What qualifies you to get to heaven? Whosoever believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. And the Bible says, and if you say you are saved, if you say you are born again, there is a distinction that should be in your life as a Christian. No matter your religious affiliation. And that's what we have in verse 17. He says, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Since since Pastor Israel, I'm asking you, is it the doctrine of Pastor Israel? Is it the doctrine of our Father in the Lord, Pastor W.F. Kumui? No. Since the Lord, we must be different because the Lord calls us to be different. We must be separate because the Lord calls us to be separated from the world. That's why we are considering a message like this. The Christian's separation from the world. We must be distinct in our community, in our environment, in our campuses, in our places of work. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and do what and glorify your father which is in heaven that's the light the lord has called us to the lord is not calling us to a kind of a monist monastery life 
the Lord is calling us to a life of practical Christianity. The demonstration of the life of Christ that others will see your life. They will look into your life. They will look into your behavior. They will look into your character. They will look into your association. They will look into your conduct. They will listen to your conversation and say of a fruit this man this woman is a Christian. And if you are not yet there, the Lord will take you there. I said the Lord will take you there. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not. Touch not the unclean thing. Things that defy, touch them not. Things that pollute the mind, touch them not. In our own time today, we can put it this way, go now to those websites. Those websites that are defiling. Touch them not. Click not on those links. We can even say today, those musicals that pollute the mind, that brings immoral thought into the mind. What? Listen to them not. Those shows of the world that corrupts the mind, that are defiling. Watch them not. Touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Today the Lord is calling us. For as many that have given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, to a separated life, to a life that is in conformity to the word of God. I pray such a life, the Lord will take us there in Jesus' name. For better understanding of our message today, we are going to consider this under three sub heaven. Point one, we we'll look at the description of the word and its customs. When we'll we talk about the word, what do we mean? What does it imply? Are we talking about the cosmopolitan world? The physical world? What does it imply? The description. We look at it. The descriptions of the world and its customs, its traditions. The thing. We'll talk about the things of the world. What does, what does it imply? We look at this in point one. Then point two, we look at the defilement of the world and its corruptions. Its corruptions. The war defies. And it does not only defies, it also corrupts. It corrupts. What are the defilements and the corruptions of the world? This was saying point two. Then point three, what should be our decisions? This was saying point three, crucifixion our crucifixion to the foolishness of the world and carnality. That should be our decision here today. We must be crucified. We will talk about separation. The Lord expects us that as dead to the things of the world, nothing in the world should move you. We must be crucified to the things of the world, to the canalities of the world, to the thoughts of the world, to the, uh, to the actions, the amusements of the world, the entertainment of the world. They should not be things that you find pleasures in. If you say you are a true Christian, this will seem point three. But let's go straight to point one. The description of the world and its custom, the description. If you go back again to our text in Second Chronicles chapter twenty-five. Second Chronicles chapter twenty-five. I will read verse seventy. But the, but there came a man of God saying, O King, let not the army of Israel go with thee. For the Lord is not with Israel. That's the description of the word here. For the Lord is not with them in the world. Anyone, anywhere, 
in any place, in any environment, that the Lord is not with is the word. Is the word. That's the, that's the description of the word here. For the Lord is not with Israel at this time. That's why they cannot go with you. Examine yourself. Those people you associate with, those people you bring into your closet, into your clo to your inner circle, is the Lord with them. Be sincere to yourself. Answer those questions yourself. Are they, you know, is the Lord with them? Is, are they in the ways of the Lord? Do they pay attention to the word of God? Are they doers of the word of God? Understand, they can be even in this church, but if they are not doing the word of God, if they are people that are rebellious to the word of God, if there are people that are disobedient to the word of God, the Lord is not with them. No matter what they do, it's just at what show. The Lord is not with them. He says there, for the Lord is not with them, with Israel at that point in time. That's why, brethren, we want to understand the war. The war is customs. It's traditions. So when we talk about separation from the world, you need to understand what are we separating from. Three things quickly we see in this point one. Number one, we look at the definitions of the world and its customs. The definition. What does the world, this world, it's a, what does it entail? How do we define it? Then we look at the depravity of the world and its corruptness. The depravity. And then lastly, the domination of the world and its consummation. This world will not abide forever. Do you know that? This present war in which we are now will not abide for. There is a judgment that is reserved for this present war. Because this war is an evil war. You say, oh, Pastor, what are you talking about? I will show you in the Bible. God created the war, but the war became defied. The war became corrupted. And the only thing that is good for this present evil war is the consummation by fire. That's why, baby, you have to say, how can I be a friend of the war? This war that will be consumed by fire. How can I be an associate of the war? This war that will be destroyed on that final day. But then let's go to point one, the definition of the war and is custom you need to understand like i said this war when we talk about this war we are not we don't mean the cosmopolitan uh, 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 war we are talking about the war is people the goal the character the nature the traditions and the customs of this world. If you look at Psalm 24, you need to understand that this world belongs to God. God created this world. Do you know that? This, you know, this uh, atmospheric world is created by God. Look at it in Psalm 24, verse 1. The Psalm 24. Open your Bible with me to Psalm 24. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. This world belongs to the Lord. Do you understand? This world was created by God. Do you believe that? Because in Genesis we are told in the beginning God created the heaven and what and the earth the fullness everything the totality the structures the people all belongs to god the fullness of this world belongs to god but do you know that this world became corrupted this world became you know occupied 
by the God of this world. There is a prince that owns the world, that sits in the place of authority, in the place you know of control. There is a prince that owns the power of this world. It's not because God is powerless. No. Do you know that? It's not because God created the world and allowed it. Like most people will always say, us, okay, if God is the creator of the world, why is it that there's so much evil in the world? Yes, there's so much evil in the world because there is the prince of this world. Let me show you in the Bible. In John chapter 14, and these are the very ways of Christ. The one that was with God when this world was created. In John chapter 14, verse 30 of John chapter 14. Year after, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this war cometh and has nothing in me. For the prince, the ruler, the principalities, the king, the one that controls the war, is not the creator, is an usurper, is the one, the prince. Christ himself calls him the prince of this world, the ruler of this world. In fact, we are told in John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I'll read verse 18. As a result of the prince of this world, what is their attitude? to anyone that is not of this world. Let me show you. In John chapter 15, verse 18, if this world eats you, now you begin to understand, we are not talking about the physical structure. The physical structure can eat you, a maxing. No, but we are talking about the customs. We are talking about the people. We are talking about the prince of this world that has people on that. Can somebody be a prince without a kingdom? No, it's not possible. Can somebody be a ruler without followers? If you're a ruler, you don't have followers, you're just a ruler of yourself. Is that not so? But we are talking about a ruler that has followers. And they are the people that makes up this war. And Christ himself now said in verse 18 of John chapter 15, if the war, that is the prince of the war, the rulers of the war, and his followers, if they eat you, you know that he ate me before it ate you. If ye are of the war, the war will love his own. But because he are not of the world, do you see it in your Bible? We are not of the world. We are not. We are not. There is no way a Christian can be a Christian and be part of the world. No, not at all. There is no way you can be a child of God and be a child of this world. It's not possible. There is no way you can be a true Christian and a lover of the world and the world loves you and the world appreciates you and the world reverends you and the world you know talk good about you there is no way it's not possible because christ himself said ye are not of the world we are called to be separate these are the very words of christ but i have chosen you out of the world out of the world we are choosing if you're a christian if you are born again you've given your life to the lord jesus christ you are choosing that's the the world that you are choosing out of the world you cannot be part of the world and part of christ no not at all you cannot say oh, i will do it 50 50 one leg in christ and one leg in the world no not at all is either you are for christ or you are for the world. Christ says, if you are for me, I have chosen you out. You must come out, my brother. 
you must come out my sister your behavior must be different from the world your attitude must be different from the world your conduct must be different from the world if those things are not still there you are not of christ you are not of christ because if you're of christ he will choose you he has taken you out of the world i pray as many that are still in the world the lord will bring you out today the lord will bring you out this war we'll talk about the war what does we, what do, what do we actually mean number one we mean the war worldly associations and acceptance that's the word here worldly associations i didn't know people because of the associations in the world they cannot come fully for christ they cannot decide fully for christ they say oh, no you know in my town we have that association and they say if we give our life to christ and we don't come to meetings if we die they will not bury us you want the world to bury you when the church can bury you and give you a befitting burial and because of that associations you don't come to church you miss church services you say oh this time they are doing it in Aberdeen and I'm part of the executive there you can go to all those associations and miss Sunday service examine yourself are you a true Christian worldly acceptance oh I want to be acceptable. You want to be acceptable by the world and be rejected by Christ? Ponder on it. Number two, we want adornment and apparel. We want. That's the word there. Adornment. We want. The things you put on yourself. The clothes you wear. The styles you put on. Is it accepted by Christ? Can you ask yourself in the mirror when you put those things on and say, Did Christ, do you accept this? You know, if you are true, your conscience will tell you that's just the truth. Your conscience will tell you. I don't know many people. Many husbands, they've sold their wives to the world. And many wives, they've sold their husbands to the world. We would adore men. You look at, you know, I thought this sister is a sister. Ah, pastor, forget it. Coming to deeper life does not make you a sister. It is the word of God that transforms. Is the word of God that changes life. Worldly adornment. The things of the world. You put it on yourself. You say, well, it doesn't matter. It matters before God. Because the world will approve you and God does not approve you. Worldly adornment. Where word adornment? The world and apparel. Weird Number three, weird appearances and accents. Weird, weird. What you will find in Jerusalem, you bring the Babylonish appearances, the effeminate. Just last week, we encountered someone. I was asking mom, I said, Is this one a boy or a girl? Is he a man or a woman? You know, effeminate, weird appearances. You want to bring that into the church? Where you dress now and your dressing doesn't show who you are? The original creation of God upon your life? Weird appearances. That's the word here. Number four, worthless affections. And ambitions. That's the word. Worthless afflictions. The entertainment of the world. Does it satisfy you? 
that's the war you can watch all those tv shows for hours and you cannot read your bible for 30 minutes that's the word there workplace affections if the things of the world not gives you affections more than the things of god that's the word there my brother that's the word there examine yourself spend hours watching those football matches one hour 30 minutes two hours three hours and yet you cannot have personal time to pray and read your bible for 15 minutes that's the word there what less affections and ambitions that the ambitions of your life does it take you away from the things of god from the service of god takes you away from your love for your passion passion for soul that job you are doing if that job is killing the passion for soul passion for the service of god in your life that's the word here you might say pastor i'm getting that job because i need to pay the b i'm telling you you will pay the bill you are not, but you will not be able to pay the bill in eternity. Think about it. Think about worthless ambitions, worthless affection. Number five, wicked abominations. Wicked, that's the word there, wickedness. Number six, wasteful amusements and appetites. And lastly, Weeful apologetics and apostasy. That's the word here. Weeful. Weeful. Then is what concerns me now. What, what is my take in it? If I don't have take in that, that is not for me. That's the war. That's the attitude of Absalom. He wanted to take the throne from the father. That's the attitude of would not the devil he pride himself above God? If that's your attitude now, willful, you are so willful and arrogant. That's the word here. Might be coming to church, my after too. But the world is in your life. Willfulness. I want to do my own thing. Arrogant, nobody can talk to me. Little corrections, you flare up. That's the word here. The world doesn't like corrections. That's the word. I pray the Lord will deliver us. Point two under this point one the depravity of the war and its corruptness. The war corrupts. The war corrupts. The world doesn't make you righteous, it corrupts your mind. It corrupts your soul. In fact, we are told in Second Corinthians chapter four. Open your Bible with me to Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. The depravity in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not blinded the minds deft in the minds the depraved mind will not hear the things of the spirit that's it examine yourself if you are not agreeing with the word of god you are hearing now is because your mind is depraved this is the god of this world there is a god of this world that blinds the heart of people to receive the word of god the depraved war, the depravity of the world and its corruptness. It corrupts. It did not only add in the heart, it did not only you know, make the heart depraved, it also corrupts the mind. It brings all kinds of pollutions. Iliquity. It says the less the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of god should shine in them i pray christ will shine in you everywhere you go christ will shine in you the light of the gospel will shine in your life 
and every form of darkness, the wickedness of this world, the corruptions of this world, the Lord will take them away in Jesus' name. Because if not, there is damnation. Point three here, the damnation of the war and its consummation. Consummation. This war cannot continue forever. People that say, oh, this war will, will continue forever is a lie. It cannot continue forever. There is a judgment of God that awaits this world. Look at it. In, John, in fact, Christ himself talked about it. John chapter 12, verse 31. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Verse 31. Now is the judgment of this war. Now. Can I tell you, there is judgment of this war now. Now shall the prince of this war be what? Be cast out. Be cast out. Don't wait till the final domination. Touch the world now in your own life. Let there be a judgment of the world in you. That's why you're hearing a message like this. So that you can take a decision and begin to judge the world in your life. And allow the prince of this world that have hold you in captive be cast out. If not... You will go with the consummation of the war. This war is done for judgment. Eternal destruction by God. And my brother, you cannot go to now, now. Let this war, let there be a judgment of this war now in your life. Not tomorrow, but now. As you are hearing the word of God, all the things that are pulling you into the war, Destroy them now. All the things, all the pool of the world in your life, cut away from all those things now. So that on that final day, you will not be consumed with the war. Remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. As Bible students, I know you know that story. The angels came to Lord. And his family flee, leave Sodom. There is fire coming. There is judgment coming. There is destruction coming. And they were taken out of Sodom. Does the way the Lord want to take you out of today's Sodom? Let him take you out. Because if you still remain in Sodom, in the world of today, you will partake in the consummation that will come upon the world. But I pray you will not remain. Can I hear a louder amen? The Lord will take you out. The Lord will deliver you. And you will be set free from this world in Jesus' name. That's what we are told in Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah chapter 51. I will read verse 6 of Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 6. Flee out of the means of Babylon. That's the word there. Flee out of it. Cut it off. And deliver every man his soul. Your soul is important before God. My brother, my sister, your soul matters before God. Deliver your soul from Babylon. Deliver your soul from this present evil world. Be not caught off in iniquity. Don't be caught up in the iniquity of this world. For the time, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. I pray you will not partake in that. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will set you free. 
and you will not be consumed with the judgment that will come upon this world in Jesus' name. Because this war will be cast and the prince, the principalities, the ruler of this war will be cast into the eternal lake of fire. Look at it, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. I'll read verse from verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for how many? For a thousand years, so that Christ can reign during his millennial kingdom and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years be fulfilled and after that he must be loose a little season a little season in verse 7 and when the thousand years are expired, as after the millennial reign of Christ, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations, that's the war, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number of whom is as the sand of what? Of what? of the sea but look at what happened now in verse 9 and they went up onto the bread of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and the fire do you see the consummation there and the fire came down from god out of heaven and did what and devoured them don't partake in the consummation of this war this present evil war will be consumed by fire. The fire will consume this war. Don't partake in it. That's why the Lord is calling you today. Come out. Come out from the world. Flee from Babylon. I pray we will flee in Jesus' name. Point two quickly. The defilement of this war and its corruptions. The defilement of this war. This war is defied. This war is corrupt. We've read it already in 2 Corinthians. If you go back to our text, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14. Be ye not, verse 14 to 16, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Do you see there? Oh, there is unrighteousness in the world. There is evil in the world. There is corruptions in the world. And what communion has light with darkness? This present evil world is in darkness, my brother. This present evil world is seated in darkness. In fact, we are told in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, the whole world lies in wickedness. There is corruption. There is evil in the world. Three things quickly we see under this point two. Number one, we look at the perversion of the world. The perversion. This world created originally by God, but became perverted because of sin, because of evil. In John, in uh, Genesis chapter six. Open your Bible with me to Genesis chapter six. That you know, when God created the world, He saw everything He created that they were good. But this world became corrupted. In Genesis chapter six, verse five, verse five, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the heart. That's the world was great in the heart, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil war 
continually. That's the perversion of this world, the corruption of this world, the depravity of this world. Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13, verse 13. You see the men of Sodom there in verse 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Do you see the perversion there? Wicked and sinners. This war is sinful. This war lies in wickedness. That's why a true Christian cannot partake in the war. We cannot partake in the affections, in the amusement, in the entertainment, in the you know ambitions of the world, because the world is full of evil and is corruptions and is corrupted and is corrupted. In Je Jeremiah chapter seventeen, Jeremiah chapter seventeen. I will read verse 9 of Jeremiah chapter 17. See the word that the depravity, the perversion of the art of men in the world. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, the art is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? Who can know it? This war is corrupt. Look at the corruptions of the world. Romans chapter 1. And you want to examine your life today. Is there no these things in your life? Examine yourself, my brother. Examine yourself, my sister. Romans chapter 1 from verse 28. And even as they will not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, be filled with all unrighteousness. There is unrighteousness in this present world. That's why we cannot partake in it. That's why the Lord is calling us to be separated from the world because there is unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness covetousness do you see it in your bible maliciousness full of envy murder debate deceit magnitude whisperers barbiters eaters of gold despiteful power boosters inventors of evil things Disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural afflictions, implacable, unmerciful. These are the corruptions of this war. That's why the Lord is calling us today. Come out. Don't go into the war, my brother. Don't go into the war, my sister. Because if you go, number two, the product of worldliness the product of worldliness when we go into this war the defilement of this war the corruptions of this war open your bible with me to first timothy first timothy chapter six first timothy chapter six the product the consequences the after effect of worldliness when you go into the war. Look at what it will bring into your life. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and artful lusts, which draw men into perdition into destruction and what? And perdition. Do you see there? The effect, the product of this war. What the Bible is saying there is not that we should not be. It didn't say that the Bible approved um, uh, poverty. 
There are many Christians today that say, oh, please, I don't want to be rich. I want to be poor so that I will get to heaven like Lazarus. Abraham went to heaven. Is that not so? We are talking to the of Father who? Abraham. And Abraham was very rich in cattle and is in heaven. I want to get to heaven like Abraham, not like Lazarus. How about you? I'm asking, how about you? Do you say Father Lazarus? Hey, hey. Say Father Abraham. Oh, he's a man of faith. What the, what the Bible is saying here is that when you put the mentality of getting rich above the things of God, that is worldliness. That is worldliness. Ambition to be rich. Affections to be rich. Plan to be rich. No time for Bible study. No time to fe for fellowship. No time for service unto the Lord. I just want money. You get that money. But the effect of that is what we have read here in verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. That money will snare you, will ensnare you. You become a captive to money. I don't know people that are captive to money. Captive to money. They can't take their mind off money. They don't have money, mood will change. They have money, mood will change. You are captive to money. If that's your life, they don't have job, oh, yeah, mood will change. They have job, mood will change. You are captive to that. You are captive. He says there, there is near and into many foolish and awful laws. I remember Solomon in this. Awful laws. Foolish and awful laws. Look at verse 10. For the love of money is what? Is what? The root of all evil. That get rich quick syndrome. You don't know that it's affecting many young men and women today. The love of many. I want to be rich. No time to put effort. Just get rich quick. The Bible says it's the root of all evil. That's why you see a man can sacrifice his wife for money. You see a woman can sacrifice his child for her child for money. The root of all evil. That's why you see but, you know, both us and they can kill themselves because of money, because of possession, because of property. Is the root of all evil. That's the product of worldliness. When you go into worldliness, it will bring evil, in, it will defile your life, it will corrupt your mind, it will weaken your spiritual standing, like the case of Demas. And service for the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. Demas. Look at it. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. Look at what happened to Demas. The effect, the product of worldliness in verse 10. For Demas has forsaken me. What will make a man to forsake an apostle like Paul? Oh, what will make a man to tell you how strong worldliness is, carnality, how strong it is? For demons has forsaken me, having loved this present war, having loved the love of the war, carnality, the love for pleasures, the love for convenience, the love for the things of the world, for the riches of the world, the world. The love for the, the affections, the traditions, the customs of the war will make you to forsake. To forsake righteous association. The affections of the war will make you to draw back from people that could help you to get to heaven. 
the affections of this world. That's why the Lord is calling us today. He says, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present war, and is departed into Thessalonica, cranes to Galatia, titles unto Damatia. I pray this war will not have a pull over our lives in Jesus' name. Because if it does, there is perdition that awaits the worldly. Point three quickly, perditions for the worldly. There is perdition. There is destruction. Look at the case of Bethsaida in Daniel chapter 5. It became so worldly. It went to the extent of even using the things of God to satisfy, to give him pleasures. Are you like that? The time you should use to serve God, the time you should use for Bible study, the time you should use to do evangelism, the time you should use for visitation, that's the time you use to satisfy your own pleasures. You are like busy, huh? It's not until you go in the temple and then take the things of the temple and begin to use that for your own things. No, not at all. Your time, your treasures, your talent, your money, the things you have, if you use that thing to just satisfy yourself, you are like this man. Look at it in Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. There's perdition, judgment that awaits the worldly. Daniel chapter 1, uh, chapter 5, Daniel chapter 5. Verse 1, Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousands. Before the thousands, drank wine. In verse 2, Belshazzar, whereas he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and the silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar has taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. He began to take the things of God. Do you take your tithe and offering that you're supposed to give to God? Do you use it for your own personal satisfaction? Then you are like this man, Bethesda. Do you take your talent that you are supposed to use for the things of God? You now use it to start making money, even from the house of God. Then you are like this man, Bethesda. Do you use your treasures, your money that you have? Instead of using that money to serve God, you can use it for your own personal satisfaction. Then you are like this man there. This, that's worldliness. That's worldliness. According to the Bible, not according to Pastor Israel. But what, what, what was the judgment that came upon this man? In verse 15 of that same Daniel chapter 5, that same day, the perdition, the judgment of God came upon him. In chapter, that same chapter 5, Daniel chapter 5, I will read from verse 20. And when his heart was lifted up, do you see the effect of worldliness there? Worldliness will make you to be proud. That's just the truth. Worldliness will make you to become arrogant. Worldliness, you will not be able to take correction. You become proud. Your mind, your heart will be lifted up. Nobody can talk to you again. No leader can even correct you. That's worldliness. Look at what happened to him. And when his heart was lifted up and his mind adding in pride. Adding, his mind became adding. My brother, Israel, as you are hearing this word now, are you becoming adding? 
and say, well, let the pastor talk. I will still do my own thing. My sister, are you becoming hardened? I've shown you from the word of God, but your heart is becoming more hardened against this word of God that you are hearing. Those of you who are listening to me online as well, are you becoming hardened? That's what happened to this man there. His heart became lifted up and he became more hardened to imply to the word of God. Look at what he was disposed from his kindly throne. And they took his glory from him. I pray you will not become hardened. He was referring to this case of Nebuchadnezzar. Do you understand? He became hardened. And then when Daniel told him of what happened to his father, in verse 23. In that, let me just read from verse 22. And thou, Nebuchadnezzar repented. He got, he got, he got, he received mercy from God. But his son, Bethsaida, look at what happened. And thou, his son, O Bethsaida, hast not humbled thy heart, though thou knowest all this but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven and has brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords and thy wife and thy concubines have drunken wine in them and has praised, has praised the gods of silver and gods of brass iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor ye, nor know, and the God in, wounds, in whose hand thy bread is, and those and whose are all thy ways, thou hast not glorified. As a result of that, look at the judgment that came upon him. And this is the writing in verse 25 that was written. Many, many take up prison. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many. God has numbered thy kingdom and finish it. And finish it. Take it. Thou art we in the balances and have found wanting. You found wanting today, my brother. Examine yourself. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the maidens and the patients. Examine yourself. There is still mercy for you. Don't just be condemned with the war. Let's come out of the war. Don't be consumed with the war, the affections of the war, the things of the war. Come out of the war. Husbands, help your wife to come out of the war. Wives, Help your husband to come out of the war. You see, your wife is going the way of the war, correct her. She is your wife. If you say, oh, she cannot listen to me, make her listen to you. Pray. Spend time on your knees and pray for her. And you husbands, and you just allow your wife to go wayward like that. The Lord will hold you responsible. Because you marry that woman as a Christian. And if in your, in your own house she backslides, the Lord will hold you responsible. And you husband, and you wife, you marry that man as a Christian. And you align that man to go like that and say, oh, I cannot talk to him. Do you pray for him? Do you pray for him? Do you call for help? And say, please help my husband so that my husband will not go. The Lord will hold you responsible. But when the Lord is calling us today, come out of the world. There is perditions that await the worldly and the carnal Christian. The judgment of God awaits them. Examine yourself. I pray the Lord will bring us out from the war in Jesus' name. What's the solution? Point three quickly before we pray. Our crucifixion to the foolishness of the war and its carnality. Our crucifixion, our crucifixion, our separation. Three things quickly we see here. Number one, there must be conversion by the work 
of Christ. There must be that conversion. If you must be free from worldliness and carnality, if you've lost your salvation, come back to the cross today. Because except ye be converted, Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, of Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, and these are the very words of Christ, and said, Verily I say unto thee, unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. There must be conversion. If you must enter into the kingdom of heaven and be free from all this worldliness and carnality, the love of the world, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, there must be a conversion. Don't say, oh, pastor, I got born again five years ago, and yet there's still worldliness in your life. Come back to the cross today and be converted and be changed and be transformed and be free because we are told in James chapter 5, James chapter 5, verse 19 of James chapter 5, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth. My brother, when there is now pride in your life, you have heard from the truth. My sister, when your life is now full of worldliness and carnality, you have heard from the truth. That's why we are hearing the word of God today. When you have all those, you know, apparels of the world all over you, you have heard from the truth. That's why you are hearing the word of God today. So that the word of God can convert you, can change you through the ways of Christ on the cross at Calvary. And won't convert him. Let him know that he that converted the sinner, that's it. You are no more a Christian. You may have titles in the church. You are no more a Christian except you are converted. Except you are transformed, you are changed. He says, let him know that he that converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. The Lord will save you. The Lord will redeem you. The Lord will transform your life. There is salvation for you today. But you must confess it's not enough to say, oh, Jesus died for me on the cross. You must come, confess all those worldliness, carnality, accept with the word of God. All those things that have brought pride into your life, accept it and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Confess them to the Lord. All the things, all the practices of the world that you are not doing, confess them to the world. Confess them to the Lord. The things of the world that are giving you affection, confess them to the law so that you can receive salvation today and the Lord will save. I say the Lord will save. When too quickly cleansing from worldliness and carnality. There is cleansing today. If you are born again, you say I'm a Christian and yet you are lost to the war, come for cleansing, come for cleansing, let the Lord of Jesus cleanse you, watch you from every form of carnality, from every form of worldliness, from every form of pollutions, all the corruptions of the world that have come into your life. Come to the Lord today and you will be cleansed. I say you will be cleansed. I say you will be cleansed because we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, the promises of our salvation, the promises of his forgiveness, the promises, you know, of cleansing, of purity, that of art possible through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, having therefore these promises, 
dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. You must cleanse yourself first. If you need a cleansing from the Lord, you must cleanse yourself first. What do I mean by that? You look at your wardrobe. All those dresses that make you look like the wool, you cleanse your wardrobe from them and say, ah, I cannot put up all these things now. All those pints of the world that makes you look like the world. You say, oh, I cannot do all these things now. The air do of the world, the lifestyle of the world, the language of the world, the behaviors of the world, the treasures of the world that, you have, that is now in your possession. You say, oh, I cannot do. Cleanse yourself. You are the one, you have given yourself to all those television shows now. They have taken away your time. You can spend hours and hours and hours and hours watching all those things on the TV, on the YouTube, on the internet, on social media. No time to read the Bible. No time to pray. No time to study. No time to, you know, meditate on the things of God. No time to go out for evangelism now. Now, instead of going out for evangelism, you love the show of the world. You can go out and watch the football match. You can go out into all those places. Instead of doing the things of God, cleanse yourself from all those things. That's what the Bible is telling us here. Let us cleanse ourselves. And as you cleanse yourself, then it says, cleanse yourself from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness. Perfecting holiness in the fear, in the fear of God. As you perfect that, the Lord will do it for you. I said the Lord will do it for you. First Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. Of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children. Who are you? I'm asking, who are you? Are you going to be obedient to the word of God you are hearing today? Then he says, as obedient children. Not doing what? Fashioning yourselves according to the former lost in your ignorance. You know, brethren, I always tell people this. The standard of everything I do in life is, I always ask myself the question, what will Jesus do? But if you can take that as a standard of your life, I'm telling you, everything is going to be all right with you. Always ask yourself that question. You want to put up a cloth. You ask yourself, this cloth I want to put on now, what will Jesus do? Things happen and you want to react. Ask yourself that question. What will Jesus do? Or what will Jesus say? If you have that attitude before you, that composition before you all the time, I'm telling you, you will live in the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why it says in verse 15, But as he who has called you is holy, so be holy in all, not just in some, our Christianity is not just in church. Do you get it? It's not when I come to church on Sunday. When you go back home, what is that Christianity in your family? When you go back to your offices or to your campuses, what is your Christianity? This is in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be holy. For I am holy. For I am holy. We will be holy. The grace of God will make us holy. The righteousness of Christ will make us holy. The Calvary, that, you know, the, the blood that was shed at Calvary will make us holy in Jesus' name. Do your part. Cleanse yourself. Go back to your wardrobe. 
go back to your home, make the necessary adjustments, all the things that are wasting your life, you've heard about it now, the wasteful ambition, the wasteful affection, the wasteful amusement, all those things that are taking you away from Bible reading, taking you away from prayer, taking you away from Bible study, deal with them when you get back home. Because this thing we are talking, they are practical. It's not something that, uh, they are theoretical. You know yourself more than me, is that not so? You know yourself, allow the Spirit of God to lead you to your home and begin to take decisions that will help your spiritual life. That's why we come to this number three now, crucifixion to the war and its constitution. Crucifixion, we must be crucified. We must be crucified to the war. If we must be free from every form of worldliness and carnality. In Galatians, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Look at the statement of Paul the Apostle. And this should be the statement of your life. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Before we pray. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified. Can you see that daily in your conduct? Can you see that before you step into your heart, you, before you step into the world, always know it before that you are crucified. There are things they do in the world you cannot do. Do you know that? There are things. It's, it, it's, it's who you are. If you understand that you are crucified. Remember, I went uh, uh, somewhere uh, just this last week, me as myself and mommy. And when we got there, the people look at our lives and say, ah, these people, you are so different from us. It's like, uh, what, what, what kind of person? And the young man, you know, even as the, the uh, young lady, he had the audacity to now come to me and begin to ask questions. Right? It's a privilege to evangelize. It's a privilege to preach the gospel. He said, oh, we don't see you, you know, every night. We do this, we do that, we do all this, you know, worldliness and disco and this. And this. Do you know what? This night we are having bingo. I said, what? Bingo? Well, sorry to disappoint you. I am a Christian. We don't do bingo. That's it. You must be confident to say who you are. If you understand that you are crucified with Christ, there are things you cannot do. Elders are there. You, were you there with me? You were not there with me. If I do bingo with you, no. you will not know. But there is a high that is up there watching me. Do you understand? That's the commitment as a Christian. You don't leave your Christianity because of pastor. You don't say you are a Christian because you are in deeper life. Do you understand? You are a Christian because you want to get to heaven. And if that's the commitment of your life, you must be able to say like Paul the Apostle, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not hard, but Christ liveth in me. The Lord is calling us today as Christians. We must be number one crucified to the pollutions of this world. The lot of pollutions in the world, we must be crucified to, it, to them. The world is calling us, number two, we must be crucified to the pleasures of this world. A lot of pleasures, there are things out there. Pleasures that will give the world pleasures. But the Lord is called, we must be crucified to them. The Lord is calling us, number three, we must be crucified to the practices of this world. There are things the world can do, you cannot do it. Others may, I cannot do. You cannot do. You cannot do. Understand that. There are things people may put on them, say, you cannot do it. The practices of this world, number four, the Lord is calling us to, to be crucified to the per perversions of the world. Perversions will not be crucified. Number five, to the philosophies. The philosophies of the worldly, we must be crucified to them. Number six, the Lord is calling us to be crucified to the peers of this world, the treasures of this world. And then lastly, to the pleasures of the world. The world will try to pleasurize you. Be like us. 
Be like us. Be like us. Have you read Pilgrim Progress? If you've read Pilgrim Progress, remember when Pilgrim Progress? When he got to that, you know, to that place of amusement and the, you know, the pleasure, the things, the sound, the entertainment, the music and everything. What did Pilgrim Progress do? He put his hand to his ear and became tempting to the entertainment, to the noise, to the pressures of this world. The people came to him. Said, how, how, how can you take that journey? Don't go that journey. Come back to this world. Come back. Come back to your country. Come back to your country. He says, no, I cannot go back. I cannot go back. He quickly ran off. That's how we, the, the world will try to pressurize you. Even this city, they will try to pressurize you. You must make up your mind as a Christian. You will stand. I say you will stand. The Lord is calling us today separation from the world. We must be separated. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies every day a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. That's a reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. You don't live your life according to the standard of the world as Christians. We don't. What will the world say? That's not how we live our life. We live our life according to the standard of the Bible. You ask yourself, what did, what did God say about this thing? This thing I'm putting on now, this behavior I'm doing now, this attitude, this reaction I'm showing now, is it in accordance to the Bible? He says, be, you know, be not conformed to this world. We must not conform in anything at all. Because Jesus himself, I've read it in John chapter 15, ye are not of this world. We are not of this world. Tell your neighbor you are not of this world. Say it confidently. Then why are you presenting your children as if they are of this world? Why? Why are you presenting your children as if they are of this world? Why are you presenting your wife as if they are of this world? Why are you presenting your husband as if they are of this world? I pray the Lord will deliver us. Remember, we are not of this world. We are people of the kingdom of God. The people of this world, there is no God in them. That's why we cannot be like them. Amen? We cannot join them. Amen? We cannot go into intimate relationship with them. A Christian cannot marry an unbeliever. You cannot. It doesn't work out. Don't say, oh, I want to get her converted. No, you cannot. You cannot go into partnership with an unbeliever in business. You cannot. As a Christian, the Lord is calling us to come out of this world. Come out. Come out. So that you will not be destroyed with this world. Will you come out? I'm asking you, will you come out? There is fire awaiting this war. I pray that fire will not get hold of us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and present ourselves to the Lord in prayer. Come out. Be separate, my brother. Be separate, my sister. Seen the war, the descriptions of the war. This war is depraved. Come out from all those worldly association and acceptance. I want to be accepted. I want to be accepted. Accepted by the world and rejected by God. Whosoever is a friend of this world is an enemy of God. Come, come out. Do away with all those wayward adornments. All those worthless affections and ambitions. All those wasteful amusements and appetites. Do away with them. This world is depraved. 
and is corrupt in. There is damnation that awaits this war. Talk to the Lord in prayers today. Defilement of this war, this war defies. Be free from all the de defilement of the war. If you go into worldliness and carnality, you will lose your love for God. You lose your relationship with God. You lose your association with men of God like demons. Come out from the war. This war passes away. And the loss thereof don't pass away with the war because there is perdition for the worldly, judgment for those who are worldly. Pray and tell the Lord today that the Lord himself will help you. You will not join in the, in the affections, in the ambitions, in the practices of the world. Be crucified. Crucified to the world. Let there be a conversion. If you are not yet born again, listening to me online, or here in the physical church, you are not yet born again, then you need to come to the Lord today. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Confess your sins to him and repent from your evil way. Turn around from your evil ways and confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He will save you. And if you say you are a Christian but you are lost in the world, come for cleansing today. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse you from all the pollutions and the corruptions of the world. And then you are crucified, crucified to the world, crucified to the, to the affection, crucified to the ambition of the world, and begin to live a life that is pleasing to the Father. Let's talk to the Lord.